So, this is your meditative moment. Working together on immigration justice with Yvonne, Dennis, and Hero, and many others, um, we, we decided um, it'd be a good time to have a worship service focused within the theme of our month, which is harvest, and how, how the items that we consume in our lives are harvested, uh, and that we're thinking of that very broadly. Um, and I said to Hero, uh, we, we would love it if you want to participate in our worship service with us because I know, I've known Hero for a long time and I know he has a lot of rich, um, meaningful, spiritual ideas and experiences that he reflects upon. And he said, well, actually, I wrote an essay some time ago that I think I would love to share if it would be appropriate. And when, he, when we looked at it together, I said, oh, my gosh, this is so beautiful. Um, so. Um, I am grateful that, for Hero to come and share uh, with us this morning. Thanks for being with us, Hero. Thank you, Reverend Ken. Hi, I'm Hiro Nish Alfred Hirotoshi Nishikawa. That's my birth certificate name. I'm a Sansei or a third generation American of Japanese descent. My schoolmates and friends, however, call me Hero, my nickname. Today's essay is entitled, Why a Sansei Yuyu Works for Immigration Justice. The story begins when my grandparents migrated with papers from Japan to the US around 1900, seeking a better life. They landed in California, where eventually my parents were born. Farm work life was tough. So when economic times got bad here in the States, they pulled up stakes and returned to Japan in the, in the 1920s. Since at that time, by law, they could not become citizens, nor could they own real property. In the late 1930s, my parents exercised their American birthright by returning back to California, where eventually my brothers and I were born. My father was a chef. My mother was a domestic worker. They both barely had a high school education. Then came World War II, when Pearl Harbor was bombed in 1941. President Roosevelt, by executive order, directed our family, among 110,000 other Japanese Americans, to be relocated and incarcerated in 10 concentration camps scattered around the US. Not having an alternative, my family acceded to this severe abridgment of their constitutional rights for three years in a war relocation authority camp in Poston, Arizona, with some 6,000 other inmates, adults, and children. After the war, the Japanese Americans focused on the idea of becoming, quote, more American in language, culture, habits, social orientation, whatever it took. Ostensibly, this was to prevent future racism that led to our camp incarceration. By the mid-1950s, the racial climate had changed. My high school chemistry teacher, Mr. Kendall Pine, mentored me to be the first in my family to go to college and to study chemistry, of all things, at UC Berkeley. My parents, nor I, had no idea where this would lead. After a PhD from Oregon State in Corvallis, I spent some 30 years in New Jersey and Pennsylvania in industrial pharmaceutical biotech R&D. I was totally focused on career and family. But in the mid-1990s, at Mainline Unitarian Church, I got drawn into racial justice advocacy. This latent virus which lay dormant in my head since my Berkeley student days became activated in a UU environment. In 2007, I shifted focus to immigration reform after attending a rally in Washington, DC. With the emergence of UU plan, I'm now heartily engaged in the immigration justice team effort in honor 
and memory of my immigrant grandparents whose travels led to my living the American dream today. Thank you.